no book no bolts on it. Durr, durr. <laughs> can't take it the white cottons you know with the little yellow piece stain you know <laughs> like normal normal i'm into normal 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 like don't like want to hang from chandeliers and like i tell them like don't tell me to pull your hair don't tell me to choke you you put your finger <laughs> near my ass i'll break it off <laughs> It's that this is the Howard Stern show now. Jeez, but, uh, Jake Brown show turned no, out. Just, no, I'm just saying those are three things that are rules. <laughs> like, I say, is that bad? I mean, that's the truth. Um, what are, what are you up to these days? What are you doing? Um, I'm making a show, actually, uh, a House of Nails tour. Um, in fact, we have three meetings next week um, deciding on who we're going to use to do it. Um, who are do can you say who some yeah, of house and nail well I'm meeting with um um Bunn and Murray he, big players um, um my guy from um uh, Mandalay P Peter Goober's group mm -hmm. and then um some other ones but um um the show will will be good because it'll capture that 80% of the population that uh, is miserable mm -hmm. meaning the ones that are married and the husband gets up goes to his job he hates, goes back home to his miserable wife, eats her <laughs> shitty food. Um, they don't... So that's have, who the show is for. They don't have, you know, sex, and then he gets <laughs> up in the morning and they do it again. <laughs> so I give them an hour to, like, check out of their misery because they want what I have, see? Is this going to be a weekly series? What is it? Oh, I don't know. I mean, um, there'll be a lot of, um, a lot of tape, but... Um, I just know one thing, like, I know how to entertain people. You know why? Why? Because I knew early on to get to the big leagues, I had to put people in the seats. Mm -hmm. That's what the business is about. Without putting people in the seats, you don't make any money for the owners. And then, then now with no money for the owners, they can't pay the players. Mm -hmm. But now the TV contracts have changed all that. Yeah. Know? I mean, it's billion, I mean, multi billion well, they're dollars. Players, and they're th players are getting rewarded now when they're 30 and plus. Mm -hmm. If you look at the numbers at 30, they go straight downhill. Yeah. Well, look at, like, Syndergaard, he's getting paid under a million. That Met staff is no, cheap. So right what now. I'm saying is, see, because of how good the union is mm -hmm. and what they did, they set it up where a player gets rewarded for what he did. Mm -hmm. So the worst thing that can happen to um, a player is he's to get a guaranteed contract. Like Leo DeRocher said, it's not women that get a player in trouble. It's chasing women all night that mm -hmm. get a player in trouble. And you were a case of that, right? No, no, I didn't. No, I was not chase, dude. We <laughs> went before the game starts. So you don't play. Do you still speak with Terry or Terry? Uh, oh, my ex-wife. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's great. I gave her my whole pension. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask you Terry, about that because that is a that is a bold move for you to do. I mean, coming out of prison to give your pension away. Well, especially so, at ten dime. Ten, I mean, like every month. That's so what seventy two grand well, a year. It's like that's clear. No, a month. Well, six grand a month. No, 70 72 a month now. Um, it's the best of law will allow. So um, every month without fail, like 7200 But see, like, why should my transgressions, like, she didn't do anything wrong. She was a great wife, great mother. And um, I, I'm like a weak man, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I like to help people. Mm -hmm. So, like, um, she's a great person, though. And she's the only person I've ever loved, you know? Because, mm -hmm. like, when I'm... I remember you said that in the book. Yeah, yeah. like, no one ever sleeps over. Mm -hmm. It's like, get the towel, <laughs> the door's over there, you turn the handle to the left, then you follow the sign and say, exit, okay? Was she heartbroken, I mean, when you went no, to jail? No, she's heartbroken. She's like, she, could, she didn't need me, like, she couldn't take it. Because mm -hmm. remember, at the end, dude, you're young. Remember, in 2008, the world almost ended. Mm -hmm. I mean, around here, like, it was eerie. Like, Lehman Brothers is gone. And so, like, I'm like Jack Nicholson in The Shining by myself living up in, like, Gretzky's compound. And uh, it was ugly. Yeah. Ugly. Do you, do you regret going for that? Because you had a nice house. You went for, I mean, the ultimate house no, in Gretzky's $18 million, And then everything the, the people went down. Get it, though. I didn't buy that house because I wanted to buy that house. Well, you bought it because the business you want, the the uh, player, the Players Magazine, what was it called? It's called the Players Club. But, but no, it's real simple. Players Club. So, so um, 
I was flush with cash. I was making more money off the field than on the field. Mm -hmm. So Gretzky's place some was for sale, and they knew I was. So some Washington mutual who went out of business brokers show up and say, hey, you know, I said, here's the deal. I do a line. I say, here's what I bring in a month. Okay, I was bringing about 180 a month in. Here's my nut, 60. So that means there's 120 left. So if you can keep the payment at 35 grand a month, fix for seven years, no money down, I'll buy it. Because I can add 60, 35, 95. But the seven. number was above that was what they no, wanted. No, was a, we're going out of business. They knew it and they lied. Meaning, meaning they gave me a loan that was a fraud. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but I don't want to talk about that, but the bottom line is, like, when I told them, like, of course you're going to do this, like, loan. If you don't, I can't afford it. Like, you're not in the business of bankrupting your own customers. Yeah, they were. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's a company right around the corner called J.P. Morgan. Mm -hmm. I sued them for $100 bucks. Right here, down in federal court. I just walked right in and sued them. Was, when you left uh, jail, was your first thing on your mind? Because I remember reading that you read a lot of books there. And you had a guy, like, like a Mexican drug lord or something. He's dead now. Giving you books. Um, they killed him. <laughs> well, that's unfortunate. But were well, you, uh, was your first thing on your mind, let me write a book and a tell-all? Because, I mean, the book did well. Well, no. Like, so what happens in jail, um, when the door, like, slams and you're in a box... Like, you can only do so much. So finally, the guy next to me says, like, do you read? And I said, I've never read a book in my life. Because remember, I thought reading would hurt my eyes for baseball. <laughs> yeah. So he said, look, if you don't read, it's going to be some hard time. So he slides the book over. And the first book is by John Griffin. It's called King of Torts about bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then you become, like, ambidextrous as well. I was like Benny Hanna in there, you know, because you read, jerk off, jerk mm -hmm. off, read. Like, dr -dr 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 like Benny Hanna, bro. Because oh what else are you going to do? Yeah. Um, what else are you going to do? I'm in a six by eight cage. Do they provide, like, toilet paper for you to just, take care of yourself? Just toilet paper, but, I mean, that's <laughs> it. There's no wrong. magazines or anything. Dude, I got pictures of my, I got pictures of my cell. I should show them. I mean, it's, Maybe not, later. Even, it's not even humane, dude. <laughs> but so I had to become somebody else. So I was reading these spy thrillers by, by Daniel Silva about this Israeli assassin named Gabriel Allen. Yeah. So I literally became him. I, I mean, in the cooler. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, like, you have to be able to check out, you know, because it's like, you're in a box, bro. I mean, this room here is like the presidential suite. Compared I can to imagine just everything going through your mind at that time. I mean, you have said over and over that you were innocent. <laughs> I mean, look, have I done things I'm not proud of? Mm -hmm. Did I do anything that I deserve my freedom to be taken away? No. Well, oh, because they just barged in there, and you had no the idea what was happening. The is they caught a lot of powerful people breaking the law. Mm -hmm. Meaning, but it, I don't want to explain. When you try to explain it, people get lost, and then, oh, he's blaming everyone else. So, so he's not taking responsibility. But I am taking responsibility. I made a lot of mistakes. In fact, I own the fact that I was spread too thin. Mm -hmm. Meaning, like, I was running over people and making money, you know, hand over fist. So when it went bad, it was all spread out, and I couldn't, like, get liquid, you know? Where are you at now in your life? Are you at a good, good place financially? Oh, great, great place. I mean, mm -hmm. like, I don't live in that. In, in you don't live past. in a Gretzky home? <laughs> no, I don't live in a... But, hey, by the way, he's buying that home back. I just talked really? To, yeah, I just talked to Wayne and Janet the other day. They're great people. Um, but um, Where are you living now? Um... On this intersection, um, it's where um, the street's called Heaven and Hell Cross. <laughs> no, it's actually, have you been there? It's like, I'm there every I'm night. Been. Heaven and Hell. You guys should see it. It's a cool place. I haven't been there. Are you, don't you, go there. Nah, I don't want to be anywhere near there. Are, no. you, are you in California, though? No, I'm in Be I'm Beverly Hills. Bro. Okay. I'm living large. I'm living in my friend's guest house. Mm -hmm. um, like... Those are the ones you mentioned this in the book. This is a fifteen yeah. million dollar mansion with a back gate. I got about a ninety eight percent hit rate there. <laughs> they have no chance. And you've been there since you got out of jail, right? No, I went to um, one of them eighty thousand dollar a month like um, scams where they, you know about addiction or whatever. And but I only went there because my buddy owned it. Mm -hmm. I needed a place to live, and so he kept me in the cottage below. How important was it for you when you did get out 
to have those people close to you because obviously it's the tough people? time. Just have to the people that were close in your life prior to when you got in. Oh well, well most of them I executed. I mean, like um, like my friends that were there, a lot of them were robbing me, and so I, I have two friends um, that I consider real friends. Dorothy is one. Well, Dorothy's Dorothy, yeah, and then I have Tom Borowski. I actually have three friends, and then I have. Um, um, let's just call them females, all in one. <laughs> no, because you know, I get along good with them. I make them feel better, you know. <laughs> no, I know I, all about that. No, I brighten their day. Um, <laughs> you brighten their day. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. See, I used to entertain people on the baseball field. Yeah. Now I help like women feel better about themselves. Yeah. Is that cool. such a bad thing? No, it's not. I mean, hey, people need to be entertained in multiple no, but people, senses people, of the word. People need to feel like someone cares about. Them. Mm -hmm. So, like. I can like look them right in the eye and lie. Do a lot of women, older women, know remember you? They're like, "Oh, Lenny, like I loved you, Bubble." No, remember, no, no. They remember. They remember that night. <laughs> they remember, the, but remember their bones are brittle, <laughs> so it's not. You got to be careful. <laughs> Is nails investment still going it's on? It's killing it. Is it's, it? What is it? One. Okay, I don't know. Let's go to the videotape. What is it, nailsinvestments.com? No, one, no one wants to hear about that, because go to nailsinvestments.com. Because I remember in the book you said the success only, rate only was... Only go there if you like money, though. Only if you like Lenny. Oh, go money. To... No, money. Oh, money and Lenny. Because guess what happens? Like, some guy from the SEC, when they tried to put me in jail for, like, a real reason, said, you know who I am? He said, I'm with the SEC. He said, you're 110 and 0, you stay on this site. And, and they did no... an entire investigation to the Entire determine. investigation, yeah. dude? The guy said, I'm putting you in jail. Yeah, I said, "You want to investigate me? Roll the dice and take your chances." Mm -hmm. I ate breakfast, three hundred yards from four thousand Cubans, trained to kill me. Mm -hmm. So don't think for a second. You're come down here, flash a badge, and make me nervous. That's Jack Nicholson. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, now it's been still going. Been going yeah. eight years, and we're six, ten, and uh, one. Um, and so go there, and if you like money, go and do it. Um, but at the end of the day, it comes down to this. What you learn the most in prison is how valuable time is. See, we can buy a lot of things with money, mm -hmm. but we can't buy time. And, and so when you're there, you think about, like, you know, because I did a lot of things wrong. And, like, even though I was a good dad, because I was, like, there and I'd you know, get my kids the best stuff, mm -hmm. but I wasn't really there. Wasn't mm -hmm. present, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so, um, and I have to own that, and I and I, and I you know talk to my kids about that, um, because I was always thinking about the next deal, you know, mm -hmm. the next caper, you know, mm -hmm. like like Princess Stephanie. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not royalty on the notch, you know. Yeah. Um, I never got there, bro. No. Um, but anyway, so so I'm in a great relationship with my kids. Yeah, how are they doing? Because I know you have well, Luke is in the well, he Cardinals. Got he got traded to the Cardinals. When we talked, he was in the Braves. Like right. a week later, he got traded right. to the Cardinals. In fact, I just saw him. I was down at camp, and um, he, he looked good. But but I said to Luke, I said, Luke, you have to do something extraordinary because mm -hmm. these are the best players in the world. Not in like California, not in New York, not in Japan, not in China, not in Puerto Rico. So think about it, like. For the fans out there listening, think about how hard it is to make it to the major leagues. There's 30 jobs available. Mm -hmm. There's 30 teams, so if you play center field, that means there's 30 jobs. So that means you're one of the 30 best players in the world. Because it's the world, dude. You got China, Tokyo, you got Japan, you got Dominican, you got Puerto Rico. Yeah. And, and then to, to get up there, you not only do you have to get there, you have to take his job. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does he feel in his mind when you talk to him, Lenny, that he has big shoes to fill in terms of living up to the it's family? Not, it's not about big shoes because, like, he's six two, two hundred. Like I said, like Luke, you had more talent than, than I ever had. Really? And and but and he has yet factor too. But it's a work ethic. Well, you have to put your work in, mm -hmm. and if you don't, because the other players are all superstars too. Okay, although. 
you see people hitting 260 and striking at 180, 180 times. And, mm-hmm. But remember, once they get past four years, they get they're locked in the big leagues. Meaning, once they get through his arbitration eligible, mm-hmm. now they get to stay. So the hardest part is staying and get to arbitration. You know? He's only 21, and yeah. if if you look at his numbers, he was uh, he hit 348 at, at the single A level, and then 318. And then last year, 304 at single A. So is, yeah, is he going to be in double A now? Is he making the move up? I don't know, man. They're loaded. But, but what's even more about amazing about those numbers, look at the total of bats and look at the strikeouts. Um, it's astonishing because, I mean, like it's like 800 at bats with like 50 strikeouts. Yeah. Okay. But there's no power numbers, see? Mm-hmm. I mean... Like I told Luke. Yeah, literally. Oh, my God. He had 12, 5, 11, 16. He never strikes out. Yeah, but. That's but, incredible. But he, but he didn't drive the ball either. And so, he's got to get the OBP up but, a little bit. Draw like some more walks. Luke, though, like I said, you get three strikes for a reason. The mm-hmm. game's hard. So the first two, you have to sit on one pitch in one area, and you have to drive it. Okay? Meaning, like, you can't hit 0-2 all the time. Um, so he's got huge talent. And I, I'm going to love him as much whether he makes it to the big leagues or doesn't. How cool would it be if he went to the Mets or the Phillies for you? I mean, look, I mean, uh, like I said, I, I love my, my kids, whether they make it. In fact, when I was raising them, I said to them, you're not playing baseball. You're going to be golfers. So I lived on a country club. Hmm. And I made them, like, golf. I wouldn't let them play baseball because I wanted them to come to baseball. Mm-hmm. Not like play because I played, and they came to baseball. So Cutter, who was you know played eight years in the minors, had a good career. Married to Jamie Lynn Sigler, the actress from Sopranos, um, had to retire because uh, she has MS. That's public. He's one. Unfortunate. Public. Yeah. And so my my son Cutter is a better father and husband than I could ever dream of being. You know, and I'm proud of him. Mm-hmm. Where where do you go after this book tour and everything? What's next? Where do you see your, I mean, you're, what, 57? 57? Wow, dude, really? 50? 47? 47. All right, I, mean, 50, let's, I think, I, I don't know, 54, I think, but... but 54, sorry. Mileage, bro. You're looking 40, though, of course. Mileage, bro. Yeah. You have no idea. Yeah. I Meaning, the fact I'm above ground yeah. is a miracle in oh, I mean, and of itself. Yeah, I mean, but you, you know why, though? Because God wants me by ground to mm-hmm. help these women. You know. <laughs> but, you know, but I'm a giver, see. I'm yeah. A, I'm a, I'm, just like when I play, I took a lot of pitches, you know, for the team. Mm-hmm. For the team. You do it for the team. Yeah. But, and, but, and other senses now. But, but, yeah. but, but see, my stars on the rise right now, though. Yeah. What I mean is, like, when I was playing, I knew I was going to the big leagues. Mm-hmm. I didn't give it. I mean, like, you know, when you stretch. So in spring training, as a minor league player, you stretch as an organization. So think about how intimidating it is. So I would get in the front of the line, you stretch, I turn around, and we're all stretching. I look, I see a, like a, like a sea of blue hats, dude, like thousands. And it's like, wow, I got to make it through that. Mm -hmm. But I didn't say that. Yeah. I didn't give, I didn't care. I knew I was going to the big leagues. Just like I knew when things were starting to unravel, like I felt the life gods coming at me and like getting ready to like teach me some reality. So like I fell hard and far. But now, why I named my book the third chapter LLC, the third chapter hadn't been written. So my star now is back like on the rise. And I'm good luck too, by the way. You know, I mean, so, like, good stuff will happen. Like, tonight, you'll probably find a $100 bill at the game. You know? You'll we'll find what? You'll probably find a $100 bill at the game. I would hope no, no, so. No, no, good luck. Like, my star's on the rise. So, uh, all right, so like if I find a $100 bill, bill then I'm energy. playing Mega Millions it's tonight. energy, though, bro. Yeah. I mean, meaning, I win. I've only lost once in my life. You know who I lost to? Who? This big organization called the Federal Government. Well, yep. So, all I, got I can you. tell you out there watching, don't fight the feds. All right, a couple minutes left. Let's talk a little That's baseball it. here. Uh, again, you'll be at McFadden's Tomorrow Thursday. Night, yeah. Go get an autograph. For free. Bring the book. Get the book. House of Nails. Um, you think you have high hopes for the Mets. You like the pitching staff. 
They got a lot of hit or miss bats, but they got a lot of power. Well, is this the best Mets team since '86? Uh, yeah, probably. But here, here's what I liked about their first win: they manufactured the six runs. Small ball, yeah. They didn't hit the home. So that's that's a very good sign because you can't depend on home runs. Okay, so the fact that they scored the six runs and manufactured them mm-hmm. is is a, is it. So the Mets they'll, they'll go, uh, the, the, they'll win the division going away. Okay, I say that because as in double digit, they'll, they'll win. They'll, they'll win. I mean, I'm saying they're gonna um, win comfortably. Washington will be okay for a second, mm-hmm. and then um, um, we see what happens in October and November. But like I said, um, I'm gonna do a little report like after the game and talk about like this happened, why that happened. Mm-hmm. And um, I know we're kind of running out of time, so I wanted to say hi to, um, um, never mind. I was gonna say hi to one of my lawyers, um, but he'll charge me. <laughs> he will. Well, before we go, you had something to say that we had to let out. About well, Jet Smarter. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. let it out. Cause okay, so Jet Smarter is known as the Uber of private aviation. And you know about private aviation because you did it your whole life. A lot. Yeah. Okay, so Jet Smarter, okay, mm-hmm. who's touted as this, like, you know, greatest company in the world, will be bankrupt, will be done in six months or less. And you know why? Math, simple mathematics. When I mean, you take the spreadsheet that they have, I meaning these are... It costs so much money now to operate a jet. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they're burning nine million dollars a month. Someone's got to give. And you know what's going to give them? They'll be six months or less. They'll be done. Okay. Well, you said they're a Ponzi scheme or something. What it is a pyramid scheme? So what happens pyramid as long as members keep signing up, mm-hmm. it is enough to like keep them afloat. But they're not making money. Mm-hmm. I mean, Jay Z put a hundred million in there, but he can burn a hundred. But but like I said, Jet Smarter, it's mathematically and physically impossible for them to keep up with the business model they have. Mm-hmm. And so, if you want to read about Jet Smarter, um, you can learn all about it. They charge like fifteen grand for a membership, and um, but they'll be done. And so, you're going to see some indictments coming through here, coming like with some famous people. Um, so I will watch out for that. Let me finish with this. So. What I do now is mm-hmm. I work for the CIA. Do you actually? or Is, <laughs> is that it? CIA. No, I just wanted to say that sounds cool. <laughs> like CIA. I was like, I don't know what Lenny does like, anymore. What do CIA people do? They're, they're real secretive there. Yeah. All right. Well, CIA, what, what's going on behind them doors? I don't know. <laughs> you might be part of the, that uh, world at some point. CIA, Who knows? Bro. <laughs> Hey, but, anyway, listen, I love being here. And, yeah, it's and, good uh, having you again. Always good and, seeing you. And, and whenever, like, you're the only person I, I've agreed to do, like, a show besides... Besides so Stern. Yeah, so you and Stern. Yeah. That's uh, that's high good praise. Company. If I could get a check like Stern's getting, or Stern want to write blank check, then yeah, exactly. life would be good. I'll be hopping into Jet Smarter yeah, no, before uh, they go back. Yeah, you want, no, don't go in Jet Smarter. <laughs> Whatever but, private uh, jet you got. I always say to Howard, Howard, so, yeah, the bill, yeah. You know, he only talk about himself and money. I said, you had a bill? And he said, what are you talking about? I said, come on, bro. I got a bill. He said, I said, let's put it this way. You're closer to a billion than you are to 500 million. Yeah, he makes so much. He is the king of radio. I mean, yeah, that's such a great interviewer, too. Yeah. and Meaning, like, when he wants to get off something, he knows how to get off it. And um, he's a genius. And people respect him, and they'll give him those answers he, that he's he a wants. Genius, yeah, so, he is. And so, so the next segment with Stern, because, you know, the last one was the validators, remember? Mm-hmm. The validators, like, the ones that, like, now I'm going to bring on, it's going to be called um, the Gray Bush series. <laughs> Oh God! Huh? Where is that? I, Fossil factory. I can only imagine where that's going. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, uh, it's going great, dude. Yeah. It's going great. Like I said, <laughs> we're going. We're, so sum it up in my life because we have an end. Mm-hmm. So instead of trying to always score a touchdown, which I always used to do, mm-hmm. I'm okay with first downs. I just want to move the, the chains, dude. Move them slowly. Move the slowly chains. But surely. On the field, huh? <laughs> And then something's going to pop. <laughs> something's going to pop. Yeah. No, because, no, Paul, you like, I'm good luck right now. Hey. 
I'm, I'm hoping I find a hundred dollars on the yeah, four hundred twenty thirty whatever it doesn't matter. The bottom line is, dude, hang with me, stick with me right now. My star's on the rise. All right, I, I need a party it, with you one night. That's what I need to do. A party with Lenny Dykes. You wanna? Not tonight, but one night. No, but next time you you're in New York. No, because twenty four seven, the best time to get a hold of me. You know that. Yeah. If you need to talk to me, call. No, me. I mean, I think you called me like six a.m. your time once the well, a week I'm after you had me. I was like, "What is Lenny doing up at six? Why is he calling no, me?" No, so? I'm that's it. While that's grinding. While you're sleeping, I'm working. Well, I was awake, but I was like, "Why? Why is he, I was at work?" But. See, because sleeping <laughs> is overrated. What you're doing yeah. while you're sleeping, you're wasting time. Yeah. Well, you, you gotta sleep a little bit to stay time. healthy. You can't get that time back. Yeah. Three hours. You don't need more than three hours. <laughs> I mean, uh, I try about, to get like five about, to six. Three is a little. You can do if you didn't waste eight hours of sleeping. Like eight's a lot. I never get eight. Working get in. Yeah. It's all these doctors feeling uh, the rim and all this. You also need to get some rest three after hours. a long day, you know? Three hours, bro. It's like a nap. Three it's like a long nap. Not, then take some. <laughs> Go north. Do whatever you got to do. What I'm saying is, yes. while most people are sleeping, I'm working. That's the legend, Lenny Dykes, your World Series champion, and I believe two categories: most plate appearances and most walks in a season. The most 1993. Yeah, yeah. Well, most um, plate appearances in the history of baseball. Yeah, more than anyone. Ty I mean, Cobb, like, all those yeah, guys. Like since like I don't know, they've been playing. Eighteen hundreds. But that's my life. It's so typical. It's like, the life of Lenny. Big, or I'm in the cooler, flying in my jet, or in the cooler. It's quite the life. And like. Um, there's so much more, bro. And I'm looking forward to seeing if we see this uh, reality no, show come out. No, Don't gonna... make it like the Kardashians, What's please. That Whatever mean? you do, We're keeping really... up with the Kardashians. You're the one who got the fake butt. Yeah, <laughs> the whole family's got fake everything. See, in California, dude, it's like everyone's fake there. It's like the land oh, of great yeah. pretenders, but yeah. the weather is so... If your good. coffee's under like $8, they hate you. It's oh, ridiculous. I, like, I smoke a cigarette in California. They're going to be like shooting heroin. Yeah. Like, uh. they don't like me, really, but you know what? I don't care. F the haters, right? You know haters what? Hate. Hey, at the end of the day, dude, it's all about one thing. Being a factor. Bringing some to the party that can help somebody. That's the key. Giving people hope. And we'll end on that note. Lenny Dykstra, follow him on Twitter. See him at City Field. Get House of Nails. Lenny? Good to see you, my man. Always good to see you. All right. Thank you. All right. Facebook Live out. Peace. It was good. I, I didn't say a cuss word or nothing. No, you were good. I mean, <laughs> so how did you, did you, 